good afternoon. Oh my goodness, what a day, what a week, what a, a year. <laughs> I'm here to be some more facility. It's nice, a little bit warmer than I thought. My good friend Ryan Vasari from Rawai just left. We'll be doing some wiring tidying up in the new M16 right there behind me. And for those of you on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me in this archiving moment. And for all of you on Instagram and through all the social you know, podcast networks, if you don't follow us, BC Moto, where we do some really cool stuff on YouTube, please go and do that afterwards. AKW Suspension, who just allowed me to just experience one of the most exciting opportunities of my life, which is racing the K3V at Button Willow, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Both of them look great. Thank you so much. I have the pink and, and, and like uh, slate gray. I have the Miami blue and, and neon yellow. It's great. Thank you. Love the new color on your Porsche, says uh, um, Uy Parse. Thank you so much, sir. What's up, BC? Missed another awesome wrap on the new Porsche. Actually, a lot of people think it's the red, um, red one we built. It's, not, it's actually a different one. And forgive me for those of you on YouTube and forgive me for those of you on the podcast, but I'm going to go ahead and raise the camera here. And you see right there? So the red one is right there. The red um, is right there in the back. That is not the same car, it's another 935, which is pretty crazy. So, we have the red 935, which is air-cooled. We have the K3V, which is electrified. We have that right there, which is water-cooled. It's quite a, quite a few, indeed, you know? I wish I could do this live later today, so I can watch it live. Sorry, the kid, but I will have this, second best. I will have this, definitely, on IGTV here. I will have a cut-down, cleaner version on YouTube, and if you have any podcast opportunities, I will have um, that uploaded as well on Spotify, um, Anchor, um, what's it, the popular one, um, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, iTunes, it's all there, you know? There he is, the late BC. Well, the late means I'm dead, right, Kovalt? <laughs> so, believe it or not, we were doing some wiring on that, and that got a little out of hand, and then Ryan from Ryan was here, we are talking about you know, the future of mobility and some cool stuff with BMSs and all that good stuff, and we got kind of carried away. So forgive me, Corvo. Join right as you were talking about flame shooting. Now I'm really excited. Yes, so if this one right here next to me shoots flames, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but that one is built and designed to be a flame-throwing idiot. <laughs> you hear that, young lady? You're going to be a flame-throwing idiot. Um, my, the goal is every time I desail, just flame, just like the 935s did back in the 70s, and, and at Liberty, I can do boost control and do some crazy anti-lag. It's just going to be bananas, you know? I wish other Honda boys could move up to Porsches. I wish the responsible ones would. Not the ones that misbehave. Not the rumor mongers. Not the ones who are negative. Just the really nice, good, hardworking ones, by all means. You know? So, here's what I want to do. People are asking me, is the M16 the same car as the K3V? And it's not. So, the K3V is a full electric 935 that is built in the memory of the Gauzy team that had a Kramer K3 setup in the 80s. And since I have a JDM background and there's a Japanese team campaigning the Gauzy Porsche, I want to pay tribute to that. This right here is a petrol M16. So it's America's answer, Dan, rest in peace, America's answer to the K3. Much more aerodynamic to some extent. Has a lot of nice cues that are very interesting that help with downforce on the fenders and the rear because they're limited to what they can do with the wingspan. So it has dual headlights that you can see right there. There's one, two dual headlights in the front. Forgive me on YouTube. Uh, that one is a petrol engine. Uh, it has a 996 twin turbo setup, 997 gearbox. Quite different, liquid to air intercooler, just like they did in the 935s. Um, let's see, what else is interesting on that? Ah, it's a few inches wider than the K3 and much longer, like a good foot, foot plus longer than the K3. So it's a quite menacing look. And of course, as the K3 is silent, the M16 is his evil brother, <laughs> evil twin brother, <laughs> with all the flames and, and madness going on. And it, it's very possible, guys, that this may be my, forgive me, maybe my last petrol engine as a build from BC Moto internally. I will still build petrol engines for the OEMs as they deem it necessary. I'll still build for customers as they deem it necessary. But um, in-house passion build, this may be my last. And that's why I put so much technology. I'm still wiring and stuff today. I'm still doing some can can bus communication today as we speak. How did you do the anti-lag setup on the 850 horsepower twin turbo 911? Um, quite simple, using Series 2, it has a fixed 
um, set up in terms of reduction of ignition timing. So I think I pulled 17 degrees timing as a negative value fixed. Um, I added about nine per, 8 to 9% more fuel when that happened. I limited it at 4,500 RPMs and I initiated it based upon vehicle speed. So whenever I'm below 7 miles an hour, I can floor it past 80% throttle. It will retard timing to the fixed uh, negative value I have for ignition timing and add the fuel and flames just come to life. Um, on this one, I'll do something different. Um, I'll also have it based upon vehicle speed. On this one, I'll also have a button for rolling anti-lag and I will base the amount of retard on the amount of boost I build. So if I'm at a low boost threshold, let's say 5 PSI, it will pull more timing. If I get to 10 PSI, it will pull less timing to keep me Kiru. So I was going to tell you guys about my experience last week with our friends from KW. They had this tech day where they brought up quite a few dealers and partners out and they rented out the entire Button Wheeler Raceway, which is a little bit north of Los Angeles, about two and a half hours north of LA. And it's a very nice track, very technical, which is great. And I took the K3V out there, the electric vehicle, and I was really terrified. And it was terrifying because my first time, I, I, I've done a bunch of driving around the street because it's street legal. I did a rally recently for 102 miles of just punishment on the car, which is great. Then now it's taken to a track to get some really good data, which is fantastic. So we're also filming one of our partners. It's a company uh, called Testuma, and they're going to make something really unique with this car. And they want to get some content with that. So I was waiting for them to show up. But I did something very interesting. Um, I found out how critical it was for me to monitor and regulate my battery temperature. So thermal management was very important. And not what you would think while I was running away with temperatures was having thermal runaway. It was the other way around where my battery temps were too cold. I was there about 10 to 11 degrees Celsius. And based upon my durate function on my BMS, on my Orion BMS, I didn't allow for much discharge or charge at the low temperatures. And when you touch my battery boxes, they were ice cold. And my car barely had any power. So I had to drive around the pits, drive around the pits to warm it up. And then finally, boom, I had full power and I went on the track and had some fun. And it was the most amazing. I mean, this car has no lag whatsoever. I've, I've raced button wheel quite a few times with the center seat Porsches, with an NSX. And this thing, this K3V, my goodness, it was amazing. And then it was great that I had a guy from KW there because I gave him some feedback on how the vehicle leaned and how it felt on the track. And then I make some custom, I didn't know they could do this. They can make some custom uh, struts for me. It was a custom valving, which I had no idea. So for those of you who are hardcore enthusiasts, um, KW could make custom units for you, for your race program on and off road, which is great. I just thought that KW, shame on me, because they've been my partner for years, that all they did was just commercially available stuff, you bolt it on and have a good day, but they can actually custom valve for you. So I'm so honored that they allow me the opportunity to race. I'm smiling because I'm so happy and how, how exciting it was. And I'm going to put a video up soon. Um, Miguel um, is up, up front. He's actually editing the video right now. I'm going to put a video up, which is going to be fantastic, you know. Um, I haven't tuned it yet, Max. So we'll see. My goal is to improve on the IROC. So my IROC did A50. Let's see what I can do with this one, which would be pretty good, you know. There are no charging stations in Button Willow. And that really made me uncomfortable because a lot of people do race there with EVs. And I even remember that uh, the guys that um, unplugged a performance, they have track days there with all Teslas and they have to drive 15 minutes away just to charge and come back. And I, I need to get something, I need to make something happen. If there's a track in California that you feel that needs to have a charging station, hit me up. Um, let me know if you have a contact with the owner of the track or someone who is in charge of giving the permission to do some modifications to the track or, 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 or how should I say, construction, so I can get some charging stations there. So I'm going to bend over backwards to make sure that Button Willow gets a charging station there or multiple charging stations, um, courtesy of Blink, whether it's fast charging DC to DC or even something level two, something. There's nothing there at all, which is sad. But... Um, for me to go there to the track and race and have no means of charging, that was a little bit annoying. That, that didn't work. Two 935s right behind me. There's another one right there. So there's a factory 935 right there, courtesy of Rod Chung from RS. There's a K3V right here as well. There is um, the 935 M16. And I'm going to give you guys a little hint of what's going on. There's one more 935 in, in paint. Fox is now, you hear that? 
one more 935, so maybe we can do something, you know? And these cars now exist. I have the unique opportunity with my partners and my great team here to bring creations to life. And that makes me so happy to be able to draw something on paper, program, and create, and then drive and experience it. It's the most amazing thing. So what is there to be happy? Then my family life, I'm very happy. I have a beautiful wife, beautiful children. It's just a great, my life is fantastic. I have great friends. Electric E30, that'd be so great. There's, I think uh, Tissa Beam already did that. So that's pretty cool. If I was to build a BMW and it was going to EV, I'll probably put it in the same genre. There's James right there. I'll probably put it in the same genre as the Group 5 cars I have around me. Group 5 tribute cars I have. So it'd probably be a CSL, wide body. I know that BMW had some challenges with reliability in those races. And that's why a lot of times they didn't podium. So imagine me being able to recreate that with something much more reliable. That'd be cool, right? But yeah, I don't want to put more on my plate. It's already crazy. <laughs> I want to talk to you guys about something interesting. So, I haven't even opened this up. This is a box with a clutch assembly from my guys at Action. And you see, that's the Action clutch right there and the BCMO logo right there. And this is for an EV project that I have. So, I'm using a net gain motor in a Caterham setup. And what I'm doing with that is using the factory gearbox with this clutch assembly so that the person can have an EV capability, no stalling whatsoever, the amazing power, much more power than a petrol engine, and be able to shift very nicely. And I'm gonna use an AM VCU for that as well, which is fantastic. But I keep getting these questions from people about VC, um, how can I break in a clutch when I'm supposed to, but I have a race car? So how does that happen, you know? And other than that, I'm gonna get to your question, Mimi, because that's a very good question you have there about how I launch in. So, here is how I break in my clutches. Ideally, you want to break in a clutch driving normally for 500 to 1,000 miles, just driving normally, no standing stars, no misbehavior, driving around. But what if you have a race car that's not street legal and you can't do that? Well, I typically do that on the, on the dyno. So, I have the opportunity by doing partial throttle tuning, where I you know, engage and disengage the clutch, and I do partial throttle tuning at 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500. So I, when I say these numbers, I'm actually using my dyno, the hydraulics of my dyno, my Dynapack, to lock the RPM at 2,000 RPMs and vary the throttle and then tune for ideal ignition timing and ideal fuel ratios, especially in partial throttle. I'm shooting more towards, towards uh, how should I say, stoichiometry. And I do the same thing in 2,500 RPMs and then 3,000 RPMs and then 3,500 RPMs and all that fun stuff. And that way, I'm gradually engaging and disengaging the clutch at, at lower power levels and embedding the clutch material. And then after that, I begin my sweeps. Now, I've had customers come here with clutches that are not broken in properly, and they tend to slip. And could that happen to me? It can, but has it? No. And the reason why is I also overclutch for my setups. And you may, you may ask, what do you mean by overclutching for your setups? Well, if I have a 500 horsepower setup like the center seat gold Hot Wheels car, I get a clutch like a 2MS from them that can handle 700 horsepower. So I never have the torque overwhelming capability that I may see if I use a clutch that was just set up perfectly for that. Now I see a question came up earlier about the K3V and the clutch system. Well, the K3V puts out 636 horsepower and a ton of torque, like 701 pounds for the torque at 1 RPM, which is ridiculous. Um, and no, sir, I cannot change your Elantra <laughs> GT to Lamborghini. I could if you brought the Elantra GT, you brought the Elantra, added about another $250,000, and that can get your Lambo. Pretty nice one, indeed, you know? Um, any brake overheating issues? No brake overheating. As a matter of fact, if anything, um, um, with the K3V, Luis, is my batteries were cold and it limited my power output. It was very cold. So that being said, um, I haven't had a chance to do much of anything. Ah, newest update says, uh, D-Ling, you just came in time. I had the opportunity after doing some rally racing on the streets of Los Angeles and Malibu, all the way down to, um, was it Newberry Park that we went to? Anyway, I had the opportunity to race the K3V at Button Willow. And I'm going to put the video up soon here on Instagram. I'll put some excerpts and put the proper video up on YouTube so you guys can see. So if you haven't followed me on YouTube, after this, go right over to YouTube, subscribe to BC Moto, hit the notification bell, and every time I put some cool videos up, you'll be bing notified and you'll be good to go, you know? 
Are you familiar with the RS Future Amir's Time Attack Case Swap NSX? If yes, what are your thoughts? So yes, I've known Amir for a long, long time, as far back as when Amir had a white 911 that he used to race. Um, and that NSX actually almost used to live here prior to Amir acquiring it from Scott, who bought it as a high mileage setup with a C-Series, turbocharged it, had fun, and then sold it to Amir, and Amir took out the C-Series, put in the K, and then I think he actually won his class this past weekend, which is great. I think it's a very creative setup. I think it's clever for him to use a lighter, much more supported platform as a power plant using the K. And the car is really cool, and it sounds good. When I was out testing on, fr on um, was Thursday, he was there too testing. It was great, fantastic. Hello, Purell USA, good seeing you. Oh, guys, Purell, my partners, they helped me with this project here. They helped me with this wonderful car here. It's my oil of choice. They have now opened up again due to popular demand, their sponsorship program. So, PR is here, so I know I'm, I'm gonna get in trouble, guys, but I don't know what oil you're using, but it's the best compound I've ever experienced as a chemical engineer. That's pretty a big statement, because I've tested all type of lubricants out there. I would highly encourage you to please hit them up, DM them here, tell them BC sent you for a sponsorship, and that BC said he'll spot you guys will sponsor them. And just do it. BC said, sponsor me. And then make it happen. Zakun, no, I don't speak Spanish. But that doesn't stop you from still hitting up Piro and getting a sponsorship. So you see all these people will say, Piro number one, thank you so much. I'm sorry, Piro, I'm doing this to you. These are my family members here, These are my friends and family here on Tech Tuesday. Take care of them. They're going to send you a ton of DMs right now <laughs> all around the world, which is great, you know? Ever been to the Watersea GTI Treffen in Austria? No, I have not. I've seen photos and it looks like a grand old time, but I hadn't had the opportunity yet. What is a dream car or the car you would like to get? Get or build? A car that I would love to experience and get would be the Porsche 918. That car is the epitome of Porsche's road-going technology where they took the best of the best in their arsenal of EV technology and the best of the best in petrol technology combined the two into this beautiful roadster that's just gorgeous to look at from every angle. So I love it. I appreciate technology. Um, don't like how you have, what you have to do to maintain it. Half the cars come apart just to do some decent service to it. But anyway, but I would love to have that car, which is pretty good, you know? What about your, toy, your turbo oil tank return? Would that be for sale? So Andy, I've made those for years. Um, for my own project cars. If you're interested in buying some, let me know. I may have one or two left over. But you know, some turbo manufacturers tend to change their, their patterns for drains, so I may need that dimension from you, and I may have some more here. But um, I pretty much machined those and had them machined and finished up for my own project in house. So I have them quite a few. I have them on this car. I have them on the IROC um, Twin Turbo. Uh, I have it on my um, center seat Porsche out there. I have quite a few cars, um, but uh, if you need some, let me know. Maybe I can check and see if I have any more stock or move, move up some for you. Just let me know. Hmm? For the GT2878R, since I'm not a Garrett guy, I'm really big on precision and turbinetics. I may need your assistance on the dimensions, eyelet to eyelet center of the dimensions of the bolt holes for the drain, and maybe you can help that, you know? Learning a lot about chemistry for the turbo fans lately. Wow, that's pretty nice. Ah, methacylate, mesocrylate glue is my food. Wow, that's very nice, D-Link. Good seeing. Are you still doing aerofans at all? Are you still doing that? Let me know. I'm very curious. Because I wouldn't mind incorporating some of your stuff on my newer projects. Let me know. Because I haven't worked with you in a while. I'm actually missing working with you. Anyway, hola, Victoria. Thank you for joining. I don't know what hablan means, but my pleasure indeed, Andy. Just let me know. Oh, do I speak Spanish? No, I do not, unfortunately. Do I invest? Yes, I do. Absolutely. In myself and many others as well. Um, I'm having a great day as well. You know what's even great? Because today is my daughter's birthday. She turns eight. And my good friend Sal, if you're still here, happy birthday to you as well. Um, but that being said, guys, I do have to fly. It's one o'clock almost now in California. But I really appreciate you guys joining me on this new Tech Tuesday. Thanks for listening to my insight on driving the K3V on a racetrack, my build of the new M16, how to break in clutches, my favorite cars, what got me into tuning, all that fun stuff. Thanks for the happy birthday to Inkira as well. And guys, enjoy your afternoon, and I will see you soon.